The Sustenance of the Soul by Abu Zaid al-Bahi. Now, this book translated by Nate Manik Badri is absolute uh, essential for all of you who are working with Muslim psyche. Absolute essential. It is a beautiful short book which will leave food for thought. It's part of our Islamic legacy in terms of healing modalities, medicine and psychology as well, because before everything was connected. And I hope I will give justice in this uh, in this short review. I will surely try. So maybe let's start with what is it that Al Balhi understands by the term of the soul. So uh, accordingly to Al Balhi, soul is a rather eternal eternal being and also it is that creation of god which lives internally uh, in our in our body in sync with our body so it has different qualities as well and one of the qualities is that it turns itself against itself so i'm discussing now the psychological quality and what he meant by that is that we have whispers in arabic words which come from within ourselves, and today we would probably class them um, or name them as negative thoughts or counterproductive thoughts, right? And, and not only that, this book will explain you how to combat this phenomena. But going back to, to the soul itself, uh, according to Al Balhi, to his practical uh, and clinical observation um, and results, the best way to combat uh, those negative thoughts is to approach it from holistic point of view, meaning invest in an amal, which is actions. Uh, and those actions, uh, they should be geared towards uh, broadly understood afia, meaning well-being or hygiene, mental health hygiene. So he says that if we concern ourselves from the perspective of afia with food, drink, sex, music, uh, landscape and beautiful objects, these were the tools of healing at that time. Then we have, uh, then we have high possibility to build in ourselves uh, not only healthy mental self, but also something which we're discussing right now uh, in mental health, and it wasn't the case many centuries, I would say, ago, and that is resilience. And I'm going to present to you a chapter about resilience from, from this book in a moment, so you will understand where he was coming from, inshallah. So uh, the resilience of uh, from the perspective of soul uh, means that uh, our soul is uh, is interacting with our body so much so that it is bearing the discomfort of our body without leaving our body uh, and that is also recognized as a therapeutic uh, designed process for our well-being i I think it is very confusing if you haven't read that book. Um, I would find it difficult to understand it myself. So let me read you a chapter. Okay. So uh, we, uh, the, the demand themselves, okay. As we have already mentioned, suffering from obsessive inner whispering, uh, highly pessimistic, are uh, highly pessimistic belonging to highly pessimistic people. They demand themselves and exaggerate minor complaints and uh, amplify tribal misfortunes. And now the way that helps in re rem remedying the condition is, is for the ob obsessed person to contemplate uh, the powerful grip that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to nature and how he has fixed the exact age of every living person. I want you to listen now. Our creator, the most high and blessed, has blended human soul in their bodies in the most wonderful and faultless manner, perfectly bonding them in the strongest possible way so that they live together in the most uh, intimate manner. For this reason, you find that the human soul would tolerate all sorts of un in unimaginable pains, gushing wounds, broken bones, amputations, and other means without trying to break off from its body. 
It can also stand hunger, thirst, and chronic serious illnesses that affect the mental faculties and senses and prevent the body it inhabited from taking the food that it blandly needs. The soul can endure all that because of the familiarity of its attachment to the body. Not only that, but it urgently strives to ward off all the illnesses and dangers that threaten the safety of the body. So there you go. I hope it makes sense to you how holistic the approach of Abu Balhi and his, and his like, uh, sages like uh, was at that time. So accordingly to Al Balhi, he came up with uh, four diseases, mental diseases, but also in that very book, he presents the remedies for them. And those, uh, those, those diseases are uh, diseases of the soul, which is understood by him as a psyche at that time. Uh, we would now, as Islamic psychology psychologists, uh, probably differentiate from it. Nevertheless, uh, according to Abalhi, we have four mental health symptoms. And that is fear and panic. The second one is anger and aggression. The third, sadness and depression. And the fourth, obsessions. Okay. He also, in his book, provides a handful of suggestions to deal with those and underlines that the approach that we are going to take regardless of the symptoms presented should always always be a con be, be curious about the roots so if you approaching mental health if you're working with psyche of another human being according to bulky you also have to look First of all, not at the symptoms not only at those you know four brackets of mental health, but also at the roots of causations, okay? And I will come back to it whilst I'm reviewing this book. So stay with me. I want to go back now to anger, fear, and sadness and obsessions and how to deal with them accordingly to Abu Balhi. So he says that with, uh, that generally, the, there are few, and you, uh, and, you, uh, and you probably agree with that, especially if you are in the field as a Muslim therapist, there are few unresistible, um, I would say, basic approaches to any mental health issues. And that is Nasiha, which is counseling. Uh, and uh, advising and coaching. Now, uh, other than that is affirmation and tafakur, as well as working on your character understood at that time as your virtues, but also knowing your mizaj. So I will repeat. Nasiha, affirmative thoughts, tafakur, which is contemplation, and virtues, as well as your mizaj, meaning your personality. And accordingly to Al-Balhi, anger and aggression, they can be um, reversed if you use nasiha, sabr, as well as rahma, contemplation of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and working on yourself, trying to accept that rahma, that, uh, that sensitivity and empathy with others and for yourself. And that eventually should lead you also to forgive you, forgiveness. Um, also, owning your own mistakes, meaning that the fact or that contemplation on your own, uh, on your own faults should also, according to him, hold you down. And he gives really nice examples in that situation it was about the king. But you need to go and read it yourself. Now, in terms of fear, Albal, he suggested that the best remedy for our fear is um, um, antis, uh, is to differentiate between uh, real and anticipatory fears. Uh, and, uh, and that takes actually a tafakur or maybe a consultation. So Nasiha comes up here as well. Uh, he also suggests to contemplate on the virtue of courage a lot, especially in this example. And 
uh, of this um, of this symptom, which is fear. He gives example of uh, a soldier. Uh, it's a really nice example. I really encourage you to read this book. It's not really long one as well, but it's full of food for thought. And he suggests to uh, to tap into uh, into pride, courage, um, and think about consequences, uh, or maybe even compare yourself to those who are more heroic than you are and think about your day of judgment, how you want to present yourself on the day of Ahara, uh, specifically with this situation, where you're able to combat the, your own fear or, the, or whether it was the case of fear or anxiety combating you. In terms of depression and sadness, uh, Alba, he suggests that um, um, this distractions, uh, but also remedies, uh, calming remedies, such as songs and, uh, and music and talking, especially about happiness in, in life, things that brings you happiness, even if they are memories, are very, uh, are very helpful. Um, you're probably thinking to yourself, why music? No, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not a strange idea. It's a not. It's not novel idea that Muslim practitioners, not all of them, they did use music, architecture, nature. He mentioned light, light the landscape as well before, but music as well. In terms of obsession, at all times, Al Balhi suggested nasiha. And again, affirmations, but also avoiding loneliness. And that is very, very difficult because if you have ever been depressed or if you ever worked with depression, you've probably noticed that this is a natural consequence or tendency if you're experiencing those symptoms, yeah? Uh, and again, collecting your happy memories, uh, sitting down and collecting, rememorizing those happy memories according to al -Balki, helps with obses obsessions. Um, now, there's a lot being said about affirmations and working with your with your thought process. So you might ask yourself, oh, is it actually very, uh, very, uh, very is this the CBT approach, the cognitive approach, which we are working with nowadays a lot? And the answer is yes, actually. Accordingly to Islamic uh, Islamic psychologists, we believe that Al Balki he was the first, he was the forefather of CBT because he talked about thoughts, he talked about habits uh, as well as emotions and how those intelligences on those three different levels were influencing the, um, the cognition behavior and how we process affections. Uh, he, uh, he used plenty of religious inspirations as a reminders and remedies in working with your negative thoughts, but also other aspects. And uh, I think what is really interesting about uh, Abalhi approach is that he is based on puristic holism, everything is connected. And uh, something that we don't do anymore, or if we do as a psychologist or psychotherapist, we probably do it under the term of personality or individual differences. But he uh, he, start, he started his book with the importance of knowing your, uh, and balancing your misage, meaning your personality. Uh, the humus was number, you know, the first the first thing the first thing that he mentioned in temperament and he mentioned about the differences and the implications of that as well so this is you know a reminder for us especially islamic therapists to go back there refresh that memory for ourselves and implement it if not in our lives you know then if uh, in lives of our clients and uh, now I want to finish with how important affirmations are accord, uh, according to this book uh, and they are indeed quite important uh, because they lead to uh, a transcending uh, experience, spiritual, but foremost, I would say psychological, and that is resilience. So um, Al-Balhi, he mentions that self-motivation uh, can, so self-motivation is the right opposite of procrastination. So for all of you who find it difficult in life uh, to, to start the project, to finish the project, to commit yourself, I really want you to listen right now. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. According to Al-Balhi, we need to develop a talk 
or engage in talks with our friends or professionals that will help us to, uh, to create affirmative way of thinking. And only that we can be successful. Uh, now, in order to, under, to do it, we need to understand how important that is. And he suggests that we should never ever lose perspective on what, re what is important, what really is important. Because if we lose that, lose that perspective, then it will be more harmful to us than, uh, than um, the effect of the symptoms that we're going through, meaning anger, depression, obsession, whatever. So he, uh, he daily encourages us to, to, stay, uh, to stay present uh, with our own processes and tap, uh, and tap into the resources, if not yet in ourselves, then develop them in ourselves, but also outside. So, so that is why Nasiha, accordingly, uh, to, to Al-Balhi is so important. Nasiha, for those of you who don't understand what I mean by Nasiha is advice, it's counsel, it's, uh, it's coaching, it's counseling, it's psychotherapy and so forth, right? Uh, so uh, in other words, uh, if you were to read this book, and and come back and come back uh, to this video again. Um, I, I hope you will agree. I mean, drop me a line if you don't. If anything from this book, um, uh, I think I've learned the importance of taking yourself into accountability, not relying on other sources of uh, or remedies of healing, but remembering that we are somehow as souls uh, close in this Batin and Zahir phenomena, meaning uh, meaning the visible and invisible, and soul belongs to invisible, and we are at all, at all levels we are affected. So the the maintenance of your afia, of your mental health hygiene, the self preserving and taking self-responsibility measures is the right approach, if not the only approach. At the end, um, at the end of this video, I wanted to read something which I hope will, uh, you will find um, you will find interesting as well. So Dr. Ba uh, ba ma late uh, Malik Badri, he suggests that um, the the highly fasc fascinating feature of al -Bahi, cognitive uh, therapy approach, uh, which I did not find in modern literature, is to use an acceptable cognition or emotion to change another more, uh, more incapacitating one. He gives the example of a soldier suffering from uh, excessive anxiety and fear of combat. Such a soldier should remind himself of those heroic men who courageously led their troops to victory in fierce battles and whose names have been recorded in history. By comparing his own shameful emotional state with the great uh, valor, he is he's bound to uh, raise the anger at himself. This anger can then be further stimulated, transcended, stimulated by the soldier asserting to himself uh, so much so that his panicky behavior will transform uh, from being cowardly into a being uh, brave. Um, now, according to uh, Al-Badri Al and other researchers in psychology, this book, uh, this, um, this writer, he, is an, uh, he invented CBT. He invented, uh, he invented the, the way forward. Um, to the way forward to uh, for us to work and be conscious of our of our of our thought processes now i suggest something else i suggest that this book actually talks about how somatic and psycho our psyche and our somatic intelligence they go together and influence each other i hope you will enjoy this book as much as you enjoyed this video i like to hear all about it and until next video Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.